The following program is brought to you free of charge by the sponsorship of Novos Ordo Watch. See for yourself that the Church of the Second Vatican Council is not in fact the Catholic Church of the Ages. Go to NovosOrdoWatch.org. That's NovosOrdoWatch.org. Gloria in Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Anti-Modernist Reader on the Restoration Radio Network, Episode Zero. I'm your host, Stephen Heiner, and on this episode, I am joined by Father Anthony Chicada, editor of the work, The Anti-Modernist Reader, and also Associate Pastor of St. Gertz, the Great Catholic Church in Westchester, Ohio, also Seminary Professor at Most Holy Trinity Seminary in Brooksville, Florida, and also the organist that you will hear at a lot of the... Uh, masses when you go to uh, get your live streaming uh, liturgies at sgg.org. Father, thank you for joining us. It's a a pleasure being here. Restoration Radio is pleased to present the Anti-Modernist Reader free of charge to our listeners. This is, of course, episode zero. And as with all our zero episodes, they're always free because we want to tell you a little bit about the reason and the purpose for the show. And in this particular case, give you some background to the book. And um, Father will be with us for quite a few of these episodes. Also, Bishop Sanborn, we're going to try to let the author of each article in the Anti-Modernist Reader speak about his piece um, for four different shows. But Father Chicada was the editor for volume one and will continue to be the editor for subsequent volumes. So I suppose we we really need to start with, with Father and, and ask him uh, what he was thinking when he started his body of work. I think it's significant, and he speaks a little bit about this in, his, in the introduction uh, to the book, but why, Father, did you choose a particular style? Remember, for, for our younger listeners, there was a time before this thing called the internet, and this is where Father started to write and when you started writing, Father, you know, what, what were your intentions? What were your thought process? Did you, did you ever think that anything like a book would come together? Well, I didn't have that idea particularly in mind. One of the things I noticed as a um, uh, traditional Catholic priest, you know, I started out in, in 1977, I started my apostolate in the United States, was that while uh, you had some people who were very avid readers of, of uh, books and who knew the issues very well. Most people uh, in the traditional movement uh, did not like to read books. So I figured that uh, if I were to begin writing something, uh, it would be a series of, of uh, articles, shorter articles on topics that would be of uh, permanent interest to traditional Catholics, that would deal with the the more important issues uh, that we face. Because, you know, in in the apostolate, you have a um, a lot of commitments. We traveled an awful lot. I taught at the seminary. I was also organist there for for two years uh, and uh, would go to all sorts of missions in different parts of the United States. So you didn't have time uh, to sit and, and uh, work on a book. And ultimately, you figure that, that uh, your time would be better spent if you did uh, some articles that were short and were uh, to the point and would be of some sort of a, a permanent value 
to people. Because in the traditional movement already at that point, you noted that certain issues kept on coming up and kept on having to be dealt with. And if you had something short and succinct to give to people, it would uh, help them understand the issues. Now, do you feel that your writing was mostly reactive at this point, Father, that, you know, an issue would come up and that you would have, I mean, you were busy, you were, uh, you had to worry about the seminary and setting up a, a, a bunch of, of missions. I'm sure you didn't necessarily have the time to put together a list of topics and say, you know, we need to cover all of these things. Did you feel like you were more reacting to controversies that were out there? Uh, yes. And it, 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 these things were born in, um, uh, reaction. People would raise this issue about, well, uh, how can you be sure that the uh, sacraments that you are conveying are legitimate and, and, and valid? Or someone ask a question, well, what about the question of the Pope? Aren't you uh, disobeying the Pope? Or would criticize you uh, for that? Or you'd have other uh, odd things that would come up uh, at the uh, beginning, there was uh, a lot of confusion over uh, the so-called old Catholic uh, clergy. These were uh, ultimately descendants from a, a schismatic body in uh, uh, in Holland, in, in Europe, and in Germany. And these men were trying to infiltrate themselves into the traditionalist movement. So uh, with, with issues like this, you'd figure that, well, we're going to have... Uh, th these types of questions about the Pope, about old Catholics, about the um, legitimacy of our sacraments uh, are going to keep on coming up. So uh, we better address the issues. And uh, so that was uh, the job that I undertook. Well, and uh, I suppose the, the follow-up to that is if and I should to make sure all the credit goes to Father. Father named the the series the Anti Modernist Reader, and and we had to divide up all the topics. So the the very first volume is it deals with the papacy because really that's that's the heart of of all of our questioning. It always goes back to the question of authority and who is the Pope. Uh, and we'll have subsequent volumes on the mass, uh, volumes on the mass, the sacraments, and the issue of set of a contism, and, and we'll have actually more volumes after that to keep up with uh, everything that has happened since since 2008. Uh, and that's because this project actually started back in 2006. Um, this was something that made sense to me as as one of those uh, few people that Father pointed out that do like reading, and I I needed to do my research by using books. I thought. You know, everything's on the internet, and I thought this is, I, it's ironic, it's very analog thinking, isn't it, Father, that I'm, I'm somewhat of a digital immigrant, so I, I know the internet, and yet I still <laughs> wanted everything in a book. It's the same yes, way, indeed. you know, I, I still take out paper to take notes instead of doing it on an iPad like one of these young, you know, young people would do. Well, like so, so many I, people of your generation, you want to have things both ways, so. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Can't resist. Um, so the... The idea of having this book, I suppose, in a way, was a bit of selfishness. I felt that I could really use a book like this, but I, I knew that there were other people like me that would take something like this and, and have a cohesive vision. It's all well and good to go, you, and you can still, there's nothing in the book that isn't available for free online. So if you go to traditionalmass.org, you can click through every article that we're going to talk about this season and next season and the season after on the anti-modernist reader. There's nothing embargoed. But what you are going to miss that isn't necessarily there on traditionalmass.org is a, is a collection in, in a thematic way. So on traditionalmass.org, you'll have a division into topics, but we have this collected in chronological order and with, and Father has glossed each of the, uh, the uh, articles that are in this present volume. So I think that's that's really important. Um, I suppose, the other again, uh, other consideration there, Stephen, is that, is that um, uh, it frequently happens for uh, people like myself, like yourself, or readers, that you simply find it, even though you can find stuff on the internet, uh, there is 
simply nothing like a book for certain types of, of uh, research, that you want to have the thing in your hand, you want to flip back and forth between different pages and uh, make, uh, make comparisons. So it, it has, uh, there's this, this idea of uh, certainly ease of use and of, of uh, permanence as well. I know that when I take a um, theology manual to research some some issue in dogmatic theology i find it much more convenient to simply uh, take uh, some theology books off the shelf and to go through them a little bit one could find uh, these texts on the internet but actually physically having them and being able to uh, flip the pages back and forth and and compare and contrast gives you a, a uh, a certain depth of understanding that you uh, don't get simply by reading something once on the internet. Well, now you're talking about highlighters and putting flags in different pages and, and index cards. And uh, that's very old school, isn't it, Father? Uh, alas. <laughs> At least we don't have, have feather pens. <laughs> this is true. So, Again, this is just a zero episode where we just want to give our, our uh, readers a chance to, to, uh, to understand the, the reason behind it. The Anti-Modernist Reader has not been for sale. It was only available to the people who helped fund it, its publication, and it was a successful crowdfunder that we had, um, a, along with Father Chikata's uh, successful crowdfunder for Work of Human Hands. So it seems that those there's an appetite for books, Father. I mean, I can't imagine... I mean, we look at the miracle, I, I use the word small m miracle of, of crowdfunding, but the idea that you could simply put it out there and say, look, there's a great book that needs to be published. Do you want it to be published or not? And people basically vote with their dollars before the book's even published. I think that's a, a really great thing that not only validates the, the reason for having the book, but basically guarantees that the project isn't going to lose money, which is what book publishing is famous for. Yes, that's right. That's right, and and uh, you know that's that's something we've seen with uh, this project and and with the work of Human Hands as well. So it's very encouraging. So as I, I alluded to, the project started in two thousand and six, really in in the sense that I had started to read traditionalmass.org, but it came to its height in two thousand eight when I, I had a, a meeting in in person with Father and I suggested the project, and it actually went, had a lot of legs early on and and pretty much got done in 2008, 2009. But Father had his other book coming out, Work of Human Hands, and we had a couple other obstacles to, to publication at the time. So basically just got shelved, uh, a completely finished book. Um, and with lots of other projects out of the way and Restoration Radio launched, by the time we got to this book last year, we just, we just went back, uh, made dusted off and made sure that the revisions were in place. Um, Nicholas Wansbutter, um, also put a second, a, a third set of eyes beyond Father Chikata and eyes in the original, uh, the ori- one of the original proofreaders, and was kind enough to write the, the back cover copy for, for both the hardback and the paperback version. And it was interesting because when the project was finished originally, we still had Benedict the Sixteenth, so we we hadn't even had Francis in it, and I suppose. Uh, even with everything focused on JP2 and Benedict the 16th, uh, Father, this this isn't as much as um, Chaos Frank would like this to be outdated. I don't think the anti-modernist reader is rendered outdated simply by the Francis pontificate. I suppose it's almost in a way just a milder version, say, well, this is what happens with these two guys. Um, I mean, I don't even know what the composition of Volume One would have looked like if we'd had all the Francis commentary in there. <laughs> well, that, that's for sure. But uh, again, it's the, the the nature of the way the different articles were written was to uh, set down what the permanent principles uh, the permanent principles would be that could be applied to Paul the Sixth or JP Two or JP One or Benedict the Sixteenth. And that's that's always the was always my idea in the way that I, I formulated these articles. Why you would take uh, certainly the the minor, as it were, of the uh, argument of the, the theological proposition that uh, you were making, which you could take uh, from the uh, words and actions of Ratzinger, Paul the Sixth, or uh, J.P. Two. Nevertheless, the, the, the major part of the argument, the general principles, always remain the same. So you, you uh, even though the, the cast of characters for the minor argument may change, uh, the conclusion comes out the same. 
and that's how it's supposed to work. Well, and as we said, the anti mouse reader has not been for sale, but it will be for sale. A, a limited run will be available at St. At sggresources.org. Um, Father will be getting uh, a limited shipment. And once uh, that sells through, we will then put uh, the rest of the stock up for sale at truerestorationpress.com. Um, Father, I, 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 I may not have uh, had a chance to say this publicly, but again, thank you for all your work that you've done over the years, uh, sort of uh, tapping away at typewriters back when those inventions existed. Because that, that's really, when I look at this book, um, and I'm holding a copy in my hands, obviously. But when I look at this book, this is really you, Bishop Dolan, Bishop Sanborns, working because you thought this, you, you'd print out the, a pamphlet to give out at your parish or to mail out to people. And to think now that, you know, you were working for a limited audience. And because of that, now we have a book that the crowdfunder shipped to 25 different countries. So, Amazing. you know, uh, that I, you know, um, there's some think of uh, for anyone else who is typing away at a typewriter or who's working away at a, a word processor and now a computer that you really never know what's going to happen to, to work that is really important. Sometimes it's accepted, sometimes it's before it's time. But I think this series and, and this book uh, is going to continue to be a major part of the argument, especially as as uh, Francis wakes people up to the reality of the contradictions of the the hermeneutic of uh, continuity. Uh, yes, indeed. And uh, so it's it's in in terms of the arguments, uh, you know, they they uh, continue to maintain that they are uh, you know valid arguments because they're based on the correct principles. Well, we look forward to having uh, Father join us for the first episode, which is called The New Mass versus the Traditional Mass. Uh, lots of oldies but goodies uh, in that episode. And uh, we look forward to having Father back so that uh, we can have him walk us through this very, shall I say, very old article, Father, but it's a, a very important article. Very good. Uh, always a pleasure, Stephen, to discuss these and, and so many other issues with you uh, for the benefit of our listeners. Thanks so much, Father. Thanks. God bless you. All right. Bye-bye. We want to remind you that Restoration Radio episodes are syndicated on iTunes and Stitcher. If you are listening to our content in iTunes or Stitcher, please be sure to leave us ratings and reviews. This will help those who are searching for truly Catholic programming to more easily find our content. You may find the links to those two syndicates on our homepage. As I mentioned, today's episode uh, is free, but to receive access to all Restoration Radio episodes, including the ones that are not, please visit restorationradionetwork.com. Go to the member area on the menu bar to find out details on becoming a member. If you are not a member and would like to purchase an individual episode, go to restorationradionetwork.com, navigate to the episode of your choice, and simply click the links below the player on the page. After completing your purchase, you'll be emailed a secure download link. The Anti-Modernist Reader is a production of the Restoration Radio Network. All rights are reserved, and any duplication of that explicit written permission is forbidden. Permission can usually be very easily obtained by writing to mail, M-A-I-L, at truerestoration.org. If you have any questions for Father Chikata, feedback on this episode, questions for any future reference uh, for this series, it will simply be anti-modernist at truerestoration.org. There's no dash between anti and modernist. It's all one word, anti-modernist at truerestoration.org. All of us here at the Restoration Radio Network would ask that if you found the show to be informative, helpful, or in any way beneficial to you and to your faith, that you please consider sending a note of thanks to the clergy who helped make our network worthwhile. Please remember that above and beyond material contributions, the most important donation you can make to our work here is prayer. Please think of offering a mass, a rosary, or even simply an ave for our work the next time that you pray. For the restoration, I'm Stephen Heiner. May God bless you.
This program was brought to you free of charge by the sponsorship of Novus Ordo Watch. See for yourself that the Church of the Second Vatican Council is not in fact the Catholic Church of the Ages. Go to NovusOrdoWatch.org. That's NovusOrdoWatch.org.